Hello everyone, welcome to part two of the Amanda Knox video. Um, you might be confused if you did not see part one. So this is part two. Go ahead and check out part one by clicking the link that's in the description box. Otherwise, let's get back into the story here. We have just talked about Rudy, whose DNA was found all over the crime scene. So his trial began in September of 2008. And during the trial, one of the things that they discovered was that Rudy said that Amanda had nothing to do with it. But when he got to court, he changed his mind. He said that he actually saw Amanda's silhouette. But despite his attempts to prove his innocence, Rudy was found guilty of helping in the murder and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. What's really weird is that even though Rudy was found guilty of this, the media barely paid attention to him. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't even know that this case was solved and that someone is in prison currently doing time for the murder of Meredith Kircher. But Amanda still had to go to trial as the prosecution was still convinced that she was part of the whole murder. She started her first day of trial on January 16th of 2009, a year and a half after the murder. And the prosecution basically said that the motive for Amanda was that her roommate did not get along with her, that she didn't approve of her kind of crazy ways, like we said. She wasn't supportive of her partying, drinking, being sexually active, doing that kind of thing. And one thing that they noted during court was the way that Amanda and Raphael acted after the murder happened. They acted very nonchalant, kind of moping around with their hands around each other and kissing, and a lot of people took this the wrong way. So the prosecution basically set up their whole case as this was a staged break-in. They thought it was really strange that nothing from the house was stolen, and there was like a purse, a camera, and a laptop in the room, and no one took it. They thought it was really weird that someone would just break in, kill someone brutally, and then just leave. And there was a broken window in the house, which they think was used for someone to get in, and there was a large rock next to this window, but they thought that the rock was too large to be thrown up that high to actually hit the window. I don't know why they thought that, but anyway, they also said that the glass from the window was on top of Meredith's clothes, and if the glass was broken before she was killed, the glass would be underneath her clothes. So they thought that this was staging or setting up a crime scene to make it look like something else happened. Investigators also decided to use luminol on the crime scene, which is a chemical that basically detects invisible blood. And after they used this, three bloodstained footprints appeared, as well as some other smaller bloodstains. Amanda and Meredith's DNA was found in five different places in the apartment where there was blood. And they also discovered that that bloody footprint that was on the bathroom floor was the same size and shape as Amanda's. A little of Amanda's blood was also found in the bathroom, and so was Meredith's. So the prosecution basically argued that there was some type of fight between them, some type of physical altercation. But I'm sure a lot of you out there are thinking, well, they lived in that house. Wouldn't their DNA be all over the place because they lived there? Well, you know, the defense said the same thing. They basically argue that this is really not good evidence because their DNA would be all over their house. And they also argued that they could have been finding Amanda's spit, not blood, because they come across the same. The defense also said that the blood that they found, they believe was actually just her saliva. And that's where the DNA was coming from, which makes sense because you spit in your sink all the time. Then on June 12th, 2009, it was time for Amanda to tell her version of the story, and she spent the next two days on the stand. She was obviously asked about why she said it was Patrick in her confession, and why she would blame him if he had nothing to do with it, and she gave the same reason that she basically felt like she was tricked by the police into saying something that wasn't true. Under the amount of pressure of everyone it yelling at me, uh, and having them tell me that they were going to put me in prison for prote it, protecting somebody, at a certain point, I just, a certain moment, I couldn't understand why they were so sure that I was the one who knew everything. No, but evo, uh, and so, in my confusion, e quindi, nella mia confusion, I started to imagine ho a immaginare. that maybe I was traumatized, like what they said. And they continued to put so much emphasis e continuavano a mettere così tanta enfasi on this message that I had received from Patrick sul messaggio che avevo ricevuto da Patrick and so e quindi I almost was io quasi that I had ero convinta him. che l'avevo incontrato Knox told the judges and the jury that police hit her on the head and called her a stupid liar. Just feet away watching was Amanda's father, Kurt Knox. 
He said that after a year and a half behind bars, she is eager to tell her story. People are going to get a different picture of who Amanda really is. She is uh, just a regular kid, not this dark angel or whatever it is they want to call her. The trial ended up lasting a really long time, a total of 323 days. But on December 4th of 2009, two years after the murder, the court finally had a verdict. The day before the verdict was to be read, Amanda read her last statement in court. Io non sono calma. In questi giorni io ho scritto su un foglio davanti a me che avevo paura di perdere me stessa. E cioè ho paura Ho paura di avere una maschera di assassina forzata sulla mia pelle. Chiara Nox Amanda Marie e Sollecito Raffaele, colpevoli dei reati loro ascritti. Guilty of murder. Outside the courtroom, the crowds were cheering. Inside, the family was sobbing. Quickly, the Noxes left the courthouse, devastated by the verdict. Push back. Amanda was then sentenced to 26 years in the Italian prison, and Raphael was sentenced to 25 years. And she got that extra year because of making up the whole lie about Patrick being there when he wasn't. And Amanda and her family were completely shocked. They truly thought she was gonna be found innocent. Amanda herself was in shock. She just said she was trying to have faith in the justice system that, you know, the truth would come out, and she could not believe she was being sentenced for this murder. So a lot of people were really, really angry about this, especially people in America. America. In Italy, people were really angry at Amanda. There was a lot of negative press in Italy against Amanda, but in America, there was a lot of people talking about how she was being, you know, convicted of a murder she didn't commit and how unfair this was. And one person in particular that was very, very vocal about this is good old Donnie Trump. Celebrity developer, multi-level marketer, star of The Apprentice. Now from his office high atop Trump Tower in New York, Trump reflects on the opinion that he wrote that fueled the fire following the guilty verdict that sent Amanda Knox to jail for 26 years. Well, I think I'm good at judging people, and I study people, and I become rich because I understand what people are about. And I watched the Amanda Knox case unfolding in news reports from people like yourself. And after watching it for a little while, I said, this is not a guilty person. There's no evidence that links her to this crime other than she said some stupid things after you know, being tormented for hours and hours and hours. You said you might help the family. What do you mean? I may. I mean, they haven't asked me, but I may help the family. I think it's very unfair. I help a lot of families. I help many families all over the United States, actually. It just hit me. There's no reward in this for me. If anything, it's the opposite. I mean, I have a whole country that maybe doesn't like that I'm doing this. But I think it's very unfair. And I think that President Obama should get involved immediately and get her the hell out of jail because she shouldn't be there. I just wanted to include that because I thought that was really interesting. But her family had to leave Italy without her. They went back to America and immediately started working on an appeal. One of the things that we have tried to do this entire time is, is obviously support Amanda uh, by always having somebody over here, somebody to visit her and stuff like that. And we have to stay strong in order for her to stay strong. Nearly a year after the verdict, November 24th of 2010, they all met back up in the courtroom for the appeal. And at this point, Amanda and Raphael had been in jail for three years. And because this case was so drawn out, there was a new prosecutor and a new judge. And the main thing that they argued was that Rudy did the murder, that he was already sentenced and doing time for the murder, so it clearly was not Amanda. And there were inmates in the jail who said that Rudy confessed to them. On June 27th of 2011, Rudy took the stand again. At this point, Rudy's sentence had been actually knocked down to 16 years from 30. While he was on the stand, he claimed to be completely innocent and that all the other inmates that were saying that he confessed to them were just lying. Rudy had also stated in the past that he believed that Amanda and Raphael were the ones who committed the murder. So he was asked about that and he said he did say that and he still feels that way. And during the trial, Amanda made a very emotional statement. 
basically just talking about how she was convicted of a crime that she didn't commit and how she felt so sorry for her family. So the appeals court announced that they were going to do another test of the DNA, the crucial bits of DNA. So they ended up finding an independent forensic expert who could look at the DNA on the knife and the bra clip that was found. And after they looked at it, they claimed to have found 54 mistakes. The forensic experts argued that the spread of DNA happens very easily. It is as simple as brushing your arm against something. It's even possible that dry skin can kind of flake off and land on things. So they said that it was technically possible that they didn't touch either the knife or the bra strap. This is why it's so important to leave a crime scene be and have a good investigative team because so often the evidence just gets all messed up. They also discovered that the um, investigative team that was working at the crime scene didn't switch their shoe covers when going into room to room. You're supposed to change it because then you're tracking DNA from from the living room into the bedroom or you know something like that so that also added a lot of suspicion they also argued that the bra clip was there for 46 days after Meredith was found meaning some other person's DNA could have gotten on it in that time and what's so crazy is that even though Raphael's DNA was found on the bra strap there was two other people's DNA that was found on it two unknown DNA and the police just decided to not count that as evidence just you know forget about that part of it they also pointed out that the DNA that was found was very small. And it also came out that while police were looking at the DNA on the knife, they were also looking at 50 other pieces of evidence that had Meredith's DNA on it, and they totally could have cross-contaminated the DNA. So they basically argued that this DNA is not credible and therefore should not have been used as evidence against Amanda. A DNA specialist named David Balding was also hired by the Italian Forensic Association to investigate Meredith's bra strap, and his conclusion was different than the others. He concluded that the bra strap had various DNA pieces of Raphael that he didn't think would happen just by cross-contamination and therefore he believed that Raphael could have actually been involved in the murder. But the bottom line here is that there was no reliable trace of DNA of Raphael or Amanda at the crime scene. If they were going to sexually assault her and then violently murder her, there would be a lot more DNA, don't you think? So then on October 3rd of 2011, a new verdict came in for Amanda's appeal. This is an ABC News special report. Good afternoon, I'm Diane Sawyer. We have breaking news. We're going to go to the courtroom where the verdict in the Amanda Knox case is about to be announced. She, of course, the American exchange student accused of murdering her roommate, held for nearly four years. The judge is going to speak. We have an interpreter standing by. Let us listen. The Assisi Court of Perugia According to Article 605 of the Penal Code on December 4 and 5, 2009, by the Assisi Court of First Degree of Perugia against Amanda Knox and Soleil Raffaele, Knox Amanda Marie, guilty of slander, charge F, excluding the aggravating circumstances of the Penal Code and by recognizing mitigating circumstances according to Article 368 of the Criminal Code. Is she sentenced to three years of jail. It's confirmed the lack of civil and Amanda Knox Marie is sentenced to the payment of the defense costs. I'm Deanna Knox, Amanda Knox's sister, and I just have a few words on behalf of our family. 
We're thankful that Amanda's nightmare is over. She suffered for four years for a crime that she did not commit. It was announced that Amanda and Raphael were wrongly accused and were immediately released from prison. Amanda obviously was thrilled, her family was thrilled, but the public reaction in Italy was not good. Many of them were absolutely shocked and disgusted by these two, thought that they were murderers and couldn't believe that they were getting out. People had even like gathered outside the courtroom and were screaming like, shame on you, you belong in jail, rotten prison. So they ended up taking Amanda to a remote house where no one could find her so that she could be reunited with her family in peace. This was such a huge relief for Amanda. I'm sure you can imagine how good you would feel. After reuniting with her family, they got on a plane headed back to Seattle, Washington. When she got back, she thanked everyone in America for all of the support. There were a lot of people that believed Amanda was innocent. I'm, I'm really overwhelmed right now. Um, I was looking down from the airplane and it seemed like everything wasn't real. <laughs> Um, what's important for me to say is just thank you to everyone who's believed in me, who's defended me, who's supported my family. When Amanda got back to Seattle, she started studying creative writing at the University of Washington. She had gotten her own place and was starting to rebuild her life. However, people definitely recognized her. She felt like everyone knew her entire life and that she had no privacy, which is pretty much true. And it made it a lot more difficult for Amanda to adjust back to life here because not many people knew the full story. So there were just rumors and suspicion clouds around her. So it was a hard time for Amanda, but she was you know, getting her life back together, getting into a groove again, feeling a little normal and then the craziest thing happened on March 26 of 2013 the Italian court overturned both Amanda and Raphael's acquittals they basically used circumstantial evidence to claim that she was still guilty and Amanda was horrified her family was horrified as you can imagine this was extremely tough on her and the idea of going back to the Italian prison freaked her out of course they appealed this new verdict on September 30th of 2013 Amanda decided to refuse used to leave America until the trial was over. She did not want to go back to Italy. So this time she was not in the courthouse. Court, the judge ordered a new DNA test on the knife saying that they found new DNA on it, but it was such a small discovery, a very, very small amount of it on the blade, and it actually did indeed match Amanda's DNA. Of course, the defense team said the reason that her DNA was on the knife was because she had just cooked a meal at Raphael's house, so she used the knife. And January 30th, 2014, the judge found them guilty again. Amanda Knox's verdict has just been read guilty here. After nearly 12 hours of deliberation, six jurors and two judges reached this guilty verdict, finding Amanda Knox guilty, sentencing her to 28 years and six months in prison for the death of the 21-year-old British student Meredith Kircher. Her former boyfriend, Rafael Isolecito, found guilty as well, sentenced to 25 years in prison. His passport has been confiscated. Now, this decision is not the final word, is not the end of this legal battle. Uh, it'll take this court about three months to write up this decision. They have rather until three months to write up this decision before it goes to Italy's Supreme Court. The defense will have an opportunity there to appeal it. If ultimately Italy's Supreme Court ratifies this decision, Italy could request Amanda Knox's extradition from the United States, Brooke. Of course they appealed this. Amanda was just horrified. I mean, can you imagine the fear? I think we all definitely want some form of closure. I'll even just having it almost at an end of the Italian justice system and knowing that that's the final decision. Um, and then we can all start to remember just Meredith. After this, there would be no more appeals. So everything was on the line. This was a very intense moment for Amanda. It was either they were going to be free and stay free or they were gonna to go to jail for a long time. So they actually deliberated in court for two days and that's because they'd mainly been over all this stuff before. So it was only a few small things and new evidence that they were looking at. And on March 27th, around 11 p.m., a panel of five judges came to a verdict. This is CNN Breaking News. We've got breaking news. We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. I'm Wolf Blitzer in Washington. Judges at Italy's Supreme Court, they have just announced their verdict uh, as far as a potential retrial of Am American Amanda Knox and the murder of her one-time roommate, Meredith Kircher. Our CNN uh, contributor, Barbie Nadeau, is joining us on the phone right now from Rome. What's the verdict, Barbie? 
Well, the high court in Italy today has decided to overturn the murder convictions, and we had assumed that would come with an automatic retrial on the appellate level again, but we understand from the court what they've read today is they're throwing it out entirely. There will not be a retrial. Amanda Knox and uh, her boyfriend, Rafael Tulesi, still are free. Uh, the case is closed. It's over. Uh, and, and justice, as far as the Italian court system has, has ruled, is, is done at this point. The case is over. I'm incredibly grateful for what has happened for the justice I've received. The Supreme Court basically said the reason they acquitted them was because there were so many flaws in the investigation and then also the fact that the media was so intense making people biased and there was so much pressure on the police to find someone that was guilty that things were kind of rushed. They said there was not enough DNA of them at the crime scene, but the court did say that they did have sufficient evidence to find Raphael guilty, but they didn't. So at this point, Amanda is officially a free woman and she's been through years of hell. Raphael was also free. He had his own internet company back in Italy and now he's also a true crime specialist on an Italian true crime TV show. Police still believe that Rudy was not the only one involved in the murder. They still believe that there are others but they just got away with it. Amanda ended up graduating from college in 2014 and she's now an advocate for women who are falsely painted to be something that they're not, to be sex shamed. Actually, earlier this year, Amanda created a show on Facebook Watch. And we're back now with Amanda Knox and her new show, The Scarlet Letter Reports, which is a great name. So what? who are you featuring and what does it have to do with Stormy Daniels? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay, well, I mean, I would love to talk to Stormy Daniels one day, um, but... I am interviewing various women who have seen different shades of this same problem. I reached out to as many diverse people as possible because I wanted to show how all of these disparate circumstances are very similar and they're coming from a similar problem. I, I have some supporters of mine who have said to me, what happened to you was tragic, but you weren't asking for it. Those other people, they're asking for it. And for me, the issue is, no, this is, like this is the pitchfork mentality that we've we've all been dealing with. We're all human beings who have been othering each other forever. In my case, my vilification came through the lens of our society's impulse to vilify women and female sexuality. Coming home from that, I've seen how that same vilification process happens towards other women, and that's what this this show is all about, is, is bringing back compassion and context to journalism without, you know, somehow losing objectivity or the integrity of journalism. And she is very passionate about this, very well-spoken, has clearly matured a ton since this all happened. She's really into spreading awareness about how the media can be abusive and twist things and basically report fake news. Now, this all seems like a happy ending, but we do have to remember who did lose their lives here, and that is Meredith Kircher. She was brutally murdered very unfairly in her youth. It's just such a sad story especially considering what happened to her. I mean, I'm sure it was terrible and I'm sure it's very hard on her family. So my thoughts go out to them. I can't imagine what that would be like to lose your child overseas like that and then have this huge media blow up where she becomes not even the main focus. It's all about Amanda, Raphael, Rudy, everyone else, but barely anyone was talking about Meredith. But I want to know what you guys think about this case. Do you think Amanda is guilty or innocent? What do you think happened? If you do have your own theories of what happened, I really, really want to hear. I definitely want your opinions on guilty or not. If you think everything went down how it should have or if it should have been different. But that's it for me today, guys. Hope you're having a great day. I will see you next time. Bye. Where'd you go? Seems like it's been forever. Where'd you go?